Hi YouTube, I hope you're doing good. I'm doing okay. Um, I was, I am listening to uh, 007. Um, he's got, I don't know the name of the man, um, an Israeli guy is on there. It sounds like him and his daughter had made a video, um, kind of a comedy type video anyway. But, um, anyway, I'm listening to that. I don't understand Israeli. Um, I do, I can read the Hebrew language, but it has to have the English translation next to it. So, no, I'm not fluent in it, so I can't just hear it. Some words, some words I can, you know, but, you know, common words that, or ones that we have in common, you know. But anyway, so, yeah, checking in to see if um, Elfie. 007's dog is doing better. I found out he is doing a little better today. Um, Doug had suggested giving the dog some cheese and then, um, uh, which might help. And uh, sardines might be a little rich for um, the, the oil in it for their tummy. And the egg I'd probably cook, but I would maybe mix milk, bread, and cheese and a cooked egg. I don't know. That's maybe what I would do. But everybody's different, and dogs are all different, too. On Well, you know, what they like and what they don't like. And Doug had suggested maybe a little bit of clove, like the very end of it, not the long part of it, but the very tip of it, the round part, to smash that and to put it in some kind of food he likes. Well, I don't know, it is a blood thinner too. It does kill cancer cells. But I would be super careful because it's a blood thinner. And um, being that the dog is bleeding out of his nose, it's probably not the first thing that I would do. I would research it a little more. I don't know. And if I did, I wouldn't put it in the dog's food. I'd let the poor dog eat what he could eat. And then maybe just put wet some on my finger, put it in the spice and put a little on his tongue or, you know, but I wouldn't just annihilate his food with spice. I, I mean, because if he's having a hard time keeping food down, you don't want to annihilate the only energy he might be getting. So, I don't know. Just some thoughts. I told Doug he could get on here and talk, and he's like, well, I said, well, I'll, I'll um, transfer your thoughts. I'll, I'll tell Richie your thoughts on that. So, yeah, we're wishing Elfie and you the best. So, yeah, cheers, everybody. So, yeah. Uh, Richard's got a, 007's got a video of Elfie, Elfie watching his favorite YouTuber. A little video. It's cute. Elfie watching me. Uh, listening to my voice. And yeah, my dog Lady would listen to 007 and um, watch Elfie play and talk to him through the screen, and yeah, our dogs, well, my dog knew that dog through the YouTube channel, so yeah, when she was alive, so yeah, both goofy little dogs, so yeah, anyway. Yeah, a lady got real sick before she died, just like, it just seemed so unexpected to me. She stopped eating. She started getting dizzy. She was throwing up and just disgusting. My cat, my horse, all pretty much the same 
same thing, almost having like respiratory problems too. And that's what kind of led me to believe that it was this geoengineering that is going on that was bothering our animals. So I don't know. Uh, how do you prove something like that? I'm sure people that if they... um have the ability to check out different substances in a lab, you know, like when it rains or snows, and we can collect um, particles that are left in stuff and see what's there, you know, but I don't know. So, I was thinking today, how many people have sold their souls in this world, and um, some people think, well, maybe they're just looking for true love, or did they exchange that with a contract from Satan, you know, for all the riches in the world? And at what price, what price do you put on your soul? Would you sell um, your contract with God for the riches here on this planet? because that's what people do. And then, here's one. If you had somebody whispering in your ear sweetly, would it matter if they were going to kill your spouse or your child? What if they're whispering all sweet nothings to you, but they're going to kill everybody and everything that you love while they're whispering sweet nothings to you? You know, would you sell your soul for that? For um, the pretense of anything you could want on this planet today? You know, because I've been offered things in my life. You know, when people are like out there like singing songs to you, singing your praises, and they really don't mean it. They're just... Uh, playing the game, you know, whenever there's a something that's intended to separate me from God, I'm fully aware of that, and no ploy, nothing can dissuade me from my ultimate goal, which is never to be separated from God, and try as people might, I'm not that. I'm not that lame. Yeah, maybe I might work on, it works on a lot of people, but it doesn't work on me, you know. So I don't uh, buy that anybody that uh, does Satan's bidding is only looking for true love on this planet, <laughs> you know. So they, maybe, maybe the deepest parts of their soul, that's between them and God, but when it's concerning people I care about, well, if you're, uh, if you're leaning towards that's, that's an actual thing, I don't believe it, but you might, you know, you might believe like these Beyonce's or whoever out in this world, like, yeah, they only want true love. It's not the riches. It's not the fame. They don't praise Satan with their Sat Saturnalia worship or demonic videos paying homage to Satan. No, they love us and they're just whispering sweet love songs to us because they love us to death. As long as they can separate you from God, they want. Can I whisper you something sweet and then kill your kid or your spouse? Come here, sweetie pie. You know? Hope people aren't that stupid to think that these influencers out there have your your best interests at heart uh, and everybody's oh please <laughs> it's painful uh, just the thought that somebody would think that's a real thing 
at these people that are um, influencers towards the young actually have thoughts of children and families and betterment in life for the world in mind? Do you really think that's what's going on with these people? Well, I have to say, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> when I'm able to, um, if somebody were going to whisper sweet nothings at me, and I do mean nothing, while intending to persecute and hurt people that I love and care about, that person would be my en enemy, not somebody to coddle and admire and um, buy into whatever they're telling me because if it's ultimately for the wrong reason, they could say anything they want to say to me, but I know deep inside that they want somebody I love dead and they would be my enemy. So if you're listening to your enemy whisper sweet nothings lovey doveys at you, you wow. <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> Satan said, Come here, little girl. You want some candy? <laughs> I said, No, it rots my teeth. And he's like, No, it doesn't. I'll give some candy to your mommy, too. I have, I saw that you did, didn't you, you bastard? You want to give candy to everybody, don't you? Well, why don't you give candy to Christ? Yeah, that's it. Maybe if we can sweeten him up, then we can keep doing what we're doing. And if all of his flock, his disciples, his children die along the way. Who cares? <laughs> you know, at least we're rich. Yeah, I bet. I bet Satan would sing you a love song and make you rich and use your mother's head for a rug as you enter your mansion. <laughs> That's the same equivalent. You know, just throw away your family when you sign your soul away, you know. Oh, but they love God, don't they? They're so sweet. Oh, they sing so pretty. <laughs> Till they don't. But, oh, I get it. Last month, we used to represent Satan, and we did demonic lap dances for him. But this month, we're Christian, and we're pretending we're all sweet. <laughs> wow. As they kill people. Yeah, that's, that's sweetness at its finest. Oh, something to be admired there. Wow. Anyway, yeah. Throw away God for sweet nothings. No thanks. I'm good. I can do without all the the sweet nothings I've heard in my life. <laughs> Promises, you know. But I mean, I love you. Yeah, I can tell. Got some more of that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It doesn't hurt till it hurts, and then it will hurt till it's over, and it never ends. So it's a decision people make, you know? They'll be high for a while till they're all used up. And then when they get theirs in the end, they will always want to cry. Oh, well, 
we really weren't that bad. We didn't deceive millions of people and sway them towards the dark side. We pretended we were all lovey-dovey until we had them hooked, you know? Well, I'm just not that stupid. If somebody's swayed by um, the influencers out here and their advances towards your mind and heart and soul, if you're swayed by any of that, well, then you really aren't deserving of being in the house of God. I don't have a problem with people's decisions. I'm just um, miffed at the um, vastness of the stupefied people on this planet that will use their mother for a rug just for some sweet nothings, <laughs> you know. No, you can't get me to sell my soul. Not for any price. Not even one word. You'll never hear me saying like somebody like, um, I'll use Jay-Z for an example. Oh, he really only wants true love. Loyal loving. Well, he's got that out of Satan. All the influencers out there do. That's who they pay homage to. That's who they're singing to. That's who they're praising. That's the one they're working for. Yeah. So anyway, I'm not into these. These um, They call themselves females or whatever they are that are up wearing swimsuits, singing in front of people fucking naked. It's like, no. I mean... There's, yeah, class distinctions on this planet. Uh, that does not enter any class, as in classy. It enters a class, <laughs> but I wouldn't describe it as, um, it's not really border bordering on the intellectual side, so it's got to be bordering somewhere else, right? Is that love? Or is it sort of kind of like a flesh thing? Because most people know that um, the only true love really is God. If you have a marriage that's blessed by God, you're really blessed. If you're evenly yoked on this planet, with a partner that will support you in your walk with God, you're super blessed. You know? So, excuse me a moment. Cheers. That stuff called wedding cake. Reminds me of a song, MacArthur's Park, and all the sweet green icings flowing down. Someone left the cake out in the rain. <laughs> it was so hot the day Doug and I got married on Independence Day because we're both so independent. We work together in independence in a weird way like that. It's it's different. You'd have to see us together to be able to even kind of understand what I'm talking about. Um, frenemy. Is that a real term? Not really. It's it's really either one or the other. <laughs> but um, to keep your enemies close, well, when you don't have a choice, you walk right into it. You might be scared as hell, but you still walk into the fire because you know God's got your back. Yeah, and I'm in the fire. You know, and I'm not getting burnt. I'm doing the burning. I'm possessing that fire. 
you know. Oh, anyway. All I got to do is think about stuff. But people try to lead me where to think. That's the thing. Why is that? Why do they do that? Can't they think for themselves? Or can't they do nothing for themselves? Is everything pre-planned? Do we even have a choice? You say, well, free will. Yeah. Or doing God's will. Is free will and doing God's will the same thing if he orchestrated everything? What do you think? <laughs> and if you used your free will and it didn't work out so good, are you free? If you used your free will and it worked out wonderful, well, you probably feel free. But are you really? <laughs> I don't know. How free do you feel? How in control do you feel? Do you think that willing anything makes any kind of a difference in your life? I have a lot of questions. <laughs> So I, I know, and I know a lot of men that act like they're in control, and it doesn't always work out so good for them. I should say, just people in general. <laughs> it's kind of funny to watch. Yeah, especially when they think they're all like really badass and you know, like, potentially dangerous towards you or whatever, and then things don't work out for them like they want them to, you know. It's like, well, then send in the sweet ones. Send in the clowns. Yeah, might as well. Yeah. You know what I always like to do to people? That are very sweet. <laughs> Most people do, do do this. Or we do this to each other. But how sweet are you really? And how much can you handle when things get hard? Are you going to stick with it till the end? Are you going to cave? If you start caving even a little bit along the way, you're all ready to be stomped on for the final caving in when the rocks fall on them, you know? You're already, it's like a, a cartoon where you're just laying under a mountain waiting for that anvil to drop out of the sky on your head. You might as well just lay down and put your head on the ground and wait for it to be smashed you know, if you're weak now, do you think it's going to get any better? It might. I would say I would ask for God's help. Yeah, he's right in you. Your thoughts, you know, he has access every second. So does Satan. What a sickening feeling, isn't it? So there's three of you inside there. Sickening. <laughs> it's horrible if you think about it. Three entirely separate conversations within one vessel in that temple. But who sits in that seat? You know? That's what people have to decide, really, who's driving the vehicle. You might be in the car, 
but you don't have control over your life or your death. And that's who you have to concern yourself in pleasing any on this planet is the one that put us here and can take us out. That's all we have to worry about is doing the right thing while we're here. You know, I don't leave any room for doubt for people. I never will. I will never leave you guessing if I'm good or evil. You don't have to guess. You know? But if you actually think somebody that has displayed nothing but the dark side and they sing a love song to Satan, well, you can become satanic with that and be in the flesh for eternity, rotting and decaying with every life. Or <laughs> progress, you know. If you believe in spiritual life, and if you believe that you'll have a glorified body that won't rot, wouldn't that be cool? That's what I believe is real. I don't believe anything here is real. Not like that. I do believe our souls come from where it is real. And we were put here to make decisions. Satan didn't only think he could do it better. He wanted all that God had to destroy it, to kill it. It wasn't because he just wanted that. It's like if somebody wanted somebody's wife or something and was willing to kill their spouse to obtain that, you know, um, they're actually killing half that entity, that marriage, that couple. To obtain what they think they want, they are killing what is. So if you, like, kill one of the two, you're killing the whole thing for yourself. You know. Anyway. That's my thoughts on it. If we betray God, we're killing half of what is. And you don't deserve to be in his presence. If you if you have pay homage to the dark cabal and the social media influencers out here that are teaching people the wrong way, we know there's not three genders. We know genders are not mixed. You need to get down to reality for people or just give it up. You know, if you're going to play the Jewish Kabbalah games and the mystic mystery school bullshit with people of the transgender, pangender community, then fly your freak flag and stop pretending that you're of the Christ blood because we don't play that game. Christians have families typically, and if we don't personally have children and families, whatever you call yourself, if you're a God-loving, fearing person, um, the only fear I have is that I would be stupid, and I think he's got me covered there where I don't really have to worry about it, but um, I would suggest some other people kind of look a little deeper into their souls because uh, you can't gauge what God is by this fleshly bullshit. Even though you can have a life in a body at another time, you last forever. You have to decide what you want to make out of your forever. Do you want to be one of the ants 
forever? Or do you want to be able to build your own kingdom and have things the way you want them in your existence? You know? What will make your soul happy? God doesn't grant that to us here. This isn't the purpose of being here. The purpose of being here is understanding who you actually are forever, not this temporary existence, and to teach other people how to be strong to overcome that. Because Satan does have the first influence. But everything is built around just that. Everything. You're lucky if you find a handful of people that have the Spirit of God within them and can actually communicate on the level that they're thinking of everybody. Not the ones that want to stay behind. They make that apparent. That's who they are. You know, I have no argument with their stupid asses. You know, I just don't like the ones that are of that trying to infiltrate my life. It's just go with people on your own level and stop trying to be in the big league because you're not doing it. That type of feeling. Where do you fall on that scale? Like I say, what price your soul? You know? That's, that's my message for today. I had to speak my mind how I feel. Because um, even though I have love in my heart for people out in this world, and it doesn't matter who you are or what you look like or what you say or do, yeah, I'm still going to have a certain amount of love for and human respect for you. But there's ones that deserve more, and those are the ones that I want to give my attention to and my conversations and my heart. So, And other people really don't deserve it. So I'm not playing their little little forgiveness games and the rest are bullshit anymore in their due time God will deal with them um, and I will make judgment calls for myself and everybody's bullshit with thou shall not judge least I be judged I'm willing to go before the Father with things that I've already condemned my own heart nobody can even infiltrate that because I do do it right when you get there, hey, Judge John, baby dolls, I love y'all. Have a beautiful day, wherever you're at. <laughs> Peace and love from Pine City, Minnesota, USA. I don't think my stepdaughter will see this, but if you do, I love you, little girl. Happy birthday. <laughs>